So with that, I'll have Jenna come up. Hey everybody, once again, can you bring the, <laughs> I mean like, I'm mad, like here's my tea, I need my tea. I have to, while um, Tulu was praying, I just had a song idea, I have to just quickly write this down, you guys, I, I can't lose this. You never know when a song can come. When you're anything and everything can be a song. Our store, our lives are songs. So, okay. So I'm Jenna, and I come to you by way of New Jersey, by way of Wisconsin. <laughs> That's where I was born and raised. I've been in New Jersey for 16 years. I have, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, Tolu, thank you, Pastor Toby. And there is something that we're going to promise to say to Pastor Toby um, when he returns. And I'm going to tell you guys what you're going to say. And you're gonna, you are going to do it. You're going to repeat it. <laughs> you will do this. But um, I have a lovely family. Um, I'm married 13 years in August um, to my beautiful, wonderful husband, Ron. And I have two lovely children, Olivia and Nia. Do you have that picture of them? I just want to, yes, there we are. This was a couple years ago, but um, there we are, Nia and Olivia. They are, they are my, my life and purpose. Nia is actually a Swahili name that means purpose. And Olivia, I had a dream about her when I was pregnant of an olive tree, and I just knew it had something to do with her name. And so I looked up. I, I was like, I never saw olive tree. You don't see those in New Jersey. But I was just like, olive tree. And I looked, I Googled it, love Google. And I was like, that was a picture that was in my dream. And I said, her name's Olivia. <laughs> and it was always Olivia. And she is truly a, a life giver. Um, and you already met my, my beautiful spiritual daughter, Keziah. I didn't actually give birth to her. But um, I met Keziah when she was 14 years old. And... Um, something in me like leaped, almost like nervous, because it's like almost like you're seeing yourself in front of yourself. And it was like, it was scary, and I didn't know quite what to do with that. And for a long time, I was kind of like threatened by that. I was like, who is this girl that like, she has something in me that's inside her. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm scared. And then I just embraced her. So I was just like, you're my daughter. So we did the math, and it was like, I would have been just like a really, I was a great teenage mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, th this is my family. My daughter, um, Olivia, she's a gymnast, um, and she's actually uh, quite good um, at gymnastics. We're really proud of her. It's taking all my money. Um, so I, I'm also a fitness coach, so I do that. Uh, I have to be at the gym tomorrow morning at 5.30, 6.30 a.m. class to pay for that little girl to tumble all around. And then my other daughter, Nia, she is just a ham, as you can see. She's at the pool yesterday. Um, we went to the Y, and um, she plays basketball. They have lost every game. Um, they're terrible. They're absolutely awful. They are awful, awful, awful. Um, she's like, we're going to win. I'm like, no, you're not. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> They're so bad, but they but she tries. She puts on that uniform and she really tries. I mean, they they played like zero twenty six. Like they they just got blown out. Like no points whatsoever. But if they do score, she tends to be the one that does score that that one or two baskets. <laughs> I'm happy about that. But she's really bad. It's really bad. Um, <laughs> it's really bad. We're gonna find her gift. We're gonna find it. Um, so that's that you know they're they're funny they're 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 different but you know joyful i was saying before i left they're like where are you going i was like oh i have to go to teach and sing at this uh church in the city and they're like are you coming back today and i'm like yeah they're like okay fine like you may go <laughs> i was like thank you so thank you so much for those those texts that's great um and my, my husband, you know, he's great with them. I go different places, and he's, you know, he's like super dad. He's so good. I feel like there when I went to Nigeria a couple years ago, I went for a whole week, 
And I came back. Their clothes were ironed. The house was complete, you know, just perfectness. They were not late for one day of school. And I was just like, am I the problem? <laughs> like, I was like, I think I'm the issue. Like, everything was fine when you were away. So anyways, um, there are two things that we're going to tell Pastor Toby when he returns. And this is one thing is that we had so much fun, right? And that this was so life changing. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna. That is what we're gonna. That's the story we're sticking with. Okay, this was so much fun. This was so life changing. Changing. Um, I was a former history teacher. I have so many different jobs, right? Um, I was a former former history teacher. I I work full time now um, in ministry at our church. I'm one of the music directors, um, but I used to be a history teacher for 11th and 12th graders. And so the beginning of our time together may feel like I feel like I'm back at high school. That's just that's just my approach. I don't I don't mean to belittle anyone's intel intelligence or anything like that, but. I just, so it may feel like we're in a classroom. But the Lord did speak to my heart, and he said, don't approach this like you're in a classroom. Approach it like this is the mouthpiece of God. And so though I have some tactics that are classroom savvy, um, I believe that God has something very specific to tell you. And um, I want to make sure that I honor what God has shared with me. And I'm so honored to be here to share this with you. So... <clears throat> I'm going to need some volunteers to get started, okay? Um, I was thinking six, but let's go, let's go with five. I think five is better. <laughs> I was just like, there's six of us here. So um, there's so much better God's way, right? <laughs> so we're going to go with five, and these five people, I'm going to split you up. Two of you will do, say a statement out loud. And the other three will say a different statement. Everyone else is going to close their eyes and just listen to the statement. So um, do I have those volunteers? I need five people. OK. Tell me your name. OK. Daniel, that's right. Tulu, Arianne, Aaron. I need one more. And Danny, right? OK. So. I'm gonna need you guys to stand up, okay? Tolu and Aaron, you guys are gonna read statement A, and the rest of you are gonna do statement B, okay? So, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to just get gather your, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, gather your thoughts together. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to see it. All you have to do is like kind of fill in the blank. This is like the simplest thing in life. Everyone else? Okay, close your eyes, please. Everyone's eyes closed. Okay, now you can see statement A and B. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds. You're gonna say these statements very loud. Okay, on the count of three. One, two. Say it twice. One, two. Everyone, wait, hold on. A and B, A and B, you guys all say this together. Everyone's going to talk together. Yeah, yeah, everyone's going to, but that was pretty, um, I didn't expect that. They were like, okay, we're all going to say this together. And I, okay, we're going to re redo. Say it loud enough like you're outside and you have to kind of project your voice a bit. So everyone's going to say this at the same time, A and B together, the same time. All right, one, two, three. One more time. So good. Thank you, guys. Have a seat. Awesome. Could would you give them a hand clap? They did. They shared some deep, intimate things with us. <laughs> so, what did we hear? Christmas, birthday. What else? April, warm. Like to stay, I heard that like, like to stay at home. So good. How, who did you hear? Yeah, who did you hear? Okay. 
Okay. Why do you think you heard those people? They were loud, okay. They were clo oh, this person was very close to you. He was right behind you, so it was like, I heard you, okay. Those are all really great reasons. Like, I feel like this is something that happens in our lives on a consistent basis. We hear like this much noise, right? And so it's very difficult to discern who's talking. Who is it? Whose voice is it? Okay, if I'm close to them, I kind of know. Or maybe, um, I'm assuming this is your husband? boyfriend so you probably heard him you know his voice right so even if you didn't know anyone else in the room you know you could like I recognize his voice right so voice recognition is huge when you know someone when you're close to them or they're close to you so these are this kind of exercise is not really foreign to us we have to we do this every day we're, we're constantly like decoding what we're listening to and even more so in our culture, I know that my kids are just like constantly on YouTube and they're watching and they're watching and they're watching. So it's like you're watching and you're listening and all of these things are being impacted um, it, or they're impacting you in such a way that sometimes it's very difficult to know who's talking. And this is what today I, I want to speak to you about something that's really deep in my heart and something that that I'm learning um, I'm not an expert at but something that I'm learning about and I believe that it's also dear to God's heart and that is that God not only wants you to talk to him but he wants you he wants to talk to you and as you came into um, to this place of worship um, there's a sign that says you are more than you think. And that's pretty powerful because sometimes we see ourselves very small. And that's not a bad thing entirely, but I want us to look at the fact that this big, huge God, the God who created heavens and the earth, you and I, he wants to talk to you. So I would think that you are more than maybe you think. And so we're gonna look at, um, a story and my goal today is that when God speaks to you because I believe he does want to speak to you that we'll be well equipped to hear let's pray Lord thank you so much for the gift of salvation thank you so much for speaking your truth and letting your truth be known Lord use this time that we have one another with one another to invite us into your call let us hear you more clearly, more concisely, more closely. In your name, amen. So we're going to look at a story that may be familiar to you. Um, maybe it's not familiar to you. We're going to look at a story that's found in 1 Samuel, and it's actually about Samuel. And at this time, Samuel is just a boy. I don't know exactly how old he is. Maybe he's around 12, but he's been hanging out in the temple um, and he is being groomed. He's a prodigy to be a priest. And so we're going to read this story. I love stories in the Bible. I feel like they're made for Netflix. You know, it's like all the characters are there, all the drama's there. Like all you need, like all you have to do is just like plug in, right? And just like, there it is. It's like, this is like great TV. Um, it's like, who knew that Holy Spirit knew Netflix was going to be so popular? But um, anyway, so we're going to, I'm going to read this out loud. This may be a little like tedious and maybe you're not used to like reading whole passages of scripture. I love doing this because you can get the full context of that, the, the story. And sometimes we like pull scriptures out, but we don't really understand where they are. And just like your life, if somebody was to just say, how are you today? That doesn't really sum up your entire existence. And so when we pull out scriptures like that, sometimes we don't get the full picture. So I want us to get um, a full uh, experience of this boy, Samuel. And there's some characters that we're going to be introduced to that kind of help us to understand the, the main theme. Now the boy Samuel was working for the Lord with Eli. There were few words from the Lord given in those days, and there were not many special dreams. At the time, Eli was lying down in his own place. His eyes had become weak, and he could not see well. The lamp of God had not gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the special box of God was. That was the ark. Then the, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel said, here I am. He ran to Eli and said, 
here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So Samuel went down and lie, and lie down. The Lord called again, Samuel. So Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord yet, and the word of the Lord had not been made known to him. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the boy. Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lie down in his place. The Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do a thing in Israel which will make both ears of everyone who hears it feel strange. On that day, I will do all I have said I will do against the family of Eli. I have, I have told him that I will punish his family forever for the sin he knew about because his sons brought the sin upon themselves and Eli did not stop them. So I swear to the family of Eli that the sin of his family will not be paid for with gifts given on the altar forever. Samuel lay down until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. But Samuel was afraid to tell Eli about the special dream. Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And Samuel said, here I am. Eli said, what did the Lord tell you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you do so to you and more if you hide anything from me of all he said to you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And Eli said, it is the Lord. Let him do what, he's, what is good in his eyes. Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and made everything he said come true. All Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel had become a man of God. The Lord came again to Shiloh, for the Lord made himself known to Samuel, Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Okay. Awesome. So this whole story is like this really intriguing drama, and there's so much here. And there are some things that are unique to this context that I want to pull out, but there's also some universal lessons that I really want to dwell on. So just like our lives are unique and this is a very special moment in your life, you may not even realize it, but it is. Um, things are happening to you that didn't happen to your parents or didn't happen to your children or to your friends. There, there are things that are happening in this world, in our country, and in our, in our, um, in our world that we've just never seen before. And so when you think about this boy who is growing up to be a priest and he's being a priest in a time where God's not speaking. And this is a time that priests speak or God speaks to priests so that priests can speak to people. But guess what? God has not been speaking. And so God is like, there's just like this very unique opportunity for God to speak and that, ha that was not there before. So it said this was a time when the word of the Lord was rare, meaning God wasn't talking, people weren't listening, and so God was kind of waiting for this moment um, for to speak to Israel. And Israel had really, their hearts were hardened. This was a time before the judges, uh, or this was, this was the time before the kings, rather. There were judges before this um, in this time period. Samuel, if you're, if you're familiar with sort of the, the biblical perspective, Samuel's call is very important because Samuel is the one that ordains one of the most famous kings of Israel, which is King David. So it, here, here it is, this boy, that his, his mother, is Hannah, dedicates him to the Lord, sends him to the priest to be trained. The priest is kind of off his duty. His, his, his eyes are weak. He's getting old, but also he's getting spiritually numb because you can see in the story that his sons, Eli's sons, weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. And Eli didn't do anything to stop them. And so not only is Eli getting old, but he's, his tenure of a priest is becoming 
to coming to an end. And so it's now an opportunity. This is a unique opportunity for Samuel to hear God. Um, so the bigger picture here is that God is waiting for an intent, attentive listener. And you can kind of see, like, God doesn't just call him once. He calls him twice. He calls him three times. And Eli finally realizes, oh, my, this is something, like, Eli's off from God, but he's not far enough that he realizes something significant's happened. You kind of know when, like, something is significant is happening. You know, you're just like, all of a sudden, like, business as usual, and then it's not. And you're just like, wait a minute. And so the, Eli's having this moment, like, this is not just a normal day. And to the boy, he's unfamiliar with the voice of God, and so he doesn't know what's going on. The universal truth here is that um, there's an in, th that this story is invaluable to us because this proves that God does have a desire to speak to us and that there is a posture that we can have that will allow us to listen. And so who is God talking to? Let's look at some of the folks in the in the story. I explained already um, that there, there are three characters in the story that God addresses. So we have Eli, we have Eli's sons, which by the way, where are they? It's like, it's 10 p.m., where are your children? You don't know where they are, you, they, you, they're not home, okay? They're not even like there in the story, and by the way, they're being damned to their death and they're not even in the story. Like, they're gonna die, and they're not even there to hear about it, <laughs> okay? So Eli's there, Samuel's there, Eli's sons. Um, God is, a, really, he's addressing all of this. And this is just, there's just so much here about how God speaks. But um, Eli is close enough to God to recognize when something significant has happened. But he's far away enough that he's, he's no longer encountering God himself. So he's, he gets it, like, he's a priest, but he's not having these one-on-one -on -one encounters um, with God. And his sons are so far away, and they're so unaware of God's presence. They're maybe even uninterested. They're not even, in, they're not even in their place of duty. Obviously, they should have been if they were all priests. They're not there. Okay, they're out doing their own thing. And then Samuel is near to God or near to the things of God, but hasn't encountered him yet. And this is really good because it's like this it's like hope for all of us. If, if we've not encountered God yet, we can. And there's an opportunity. Um, and so Samuel is the attentive and eager listener in the story. Um, he thinks it's Eli. He thinks it's his, his mentor. And so because that's the voice he knows. So he thinks, I'm only here with him. It has to be him. And Eli recognizes this is the Lord uh, speaking. And listening in Hebrew culture, is it's not a small thing. It's a huge thing in the culture. So when Eli gives him instruction, it's not just a simple kind of thing. It's not just like, hey, this is when God comes to say this. It's like, speak, Lord, your, your servant is shemaing or shema, which means in Hebrew, it means to listen and to act. So when in Hebrew, you don't just listen, you do. So if someone says, I'm listening to you, it means I'm doing what you say. So this is really, really, really important because Eli, even though he's far away from God, he's giving uh, Samuel, some really great instructions on how do you respond to a God that's speaking. You say, I'm listening, but it's not I'm just hearing you. I'm ready to act. Okay, so we got that. We're good. We're in school. This is awesome. All right. So what is the voice of God? Um, how do you know it's him? Uh, my pastor is, uh, he's a really, he's so great. I, I, I love him. He's, he speaks all over the world, but he has these little sayings that just kind of stick to your bones and like you can't shake them. So I had to quote him this morning. Um, he said, the voice of God is a voice that keeps nagging you. Somebody says, sometimes the people say, oh, the voice of God is a still small voice. And no, the voice of God is the one that keeps saying, do this, do this, don't stop. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? That's the voice of God, the one that's nagging you. Um, and so I had to put that in because that, that just as soon as I was doing preparing for this, I thought I was like, Pastor David, thank you for this. This is what it is. Another um, perspective is that God speaks hope 
correction, strategy, love, wisdom, peace, justice, warning, unity, encouragement. He speaks in a way de designed to make your faith grow. He challenges you to believe. He speaks good, true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, excellent, and praiseworthy things. And this is from Danny Johnson, um, who is an entrepreneur and author at Spirit. Uh, um, she's written several books, but one of her books is Spirit Driven Success. And I think this is kind of really talks about what this word of the Lord is. I mean, Samuel's word that he gets is a corrective word. It's, it's a word that's, that is wisdom. Um, he speaks in a way that is really challenging Samuel. So when you're hearing things like you're nobody, nobody likes you, um, you can't do that, that's not God's voice. Okay, let's just be clear. Those, that's someone else's voice. So distinguishing between when God speaks, he speaks hope. When God speaks, he corrects. When God speaks, he gives you strategy. When God speaks, it's love. It's not these other things that are condemning um, or making you to feel shameful or guilt. That's not God. In fact, even in this passage, God's love is being shown to Eli's family to say, I'm not, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do like I've given you time to repent and you did it. And so even in that, it was like, it's not like God was just like, you made me mad and now I'm off with you. There's been some time. This has been, this is, this has been going on for some time. You get that sense from the passage that this is not just like God just like, you're on my nerves, get out my face. I'm done with you. It's just like, all right, you're getting old. You're not changing. You're unwilling to change. I'm, you're, the, the, the guard is being changed. Samuel's going to be the one now that's going to hear from me, not Eli. Okay? So the big question of the day is, you know, and there's so many scriptures that describe um, how God speaks. I love the scripture in, in Psalms that says, you know, when the Lord speaks, like, the, the earth trembles. You know, it's like God's voice isn't, like, this still quiet voice. I mean, he can come in a whisper, but it can be this big thing. It's like God is trying to, you know, tell you something. Um, and here's where I really want to spend our time um, answering a, a question that I want to know this myself, and it's just how do I listen? And more importantly, how do I shema? How do I listen and act? How do I listen closely? And so I want to give us some practices or some habits that we can develop that will help us to listen. And, and I didn't write a whole lot after this because I really want, wanted us to be able to, to hear what God is speaking because I believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking even right now. Um, but there are habits and there are practices that are very instrumental in equipping you to hear God. And there is a posture for listening. Um, and this posture is one that is ready to to be attentive, but sometimes you have to get into that place to be able to be that. Um, and some of the practices that are echoed in the story that we just read together, and there's, there's others that are drawn from scripture. So the first habit is this. Um, get to know God. I'm sorry. The first habit, or how do you listen? Hold on. Let me just back up here. You can go back to the other one. Yeah. So how do you listen? First, if you're not sure what you're experiencing in your life or what you're sensing, you should have a mentor, okay? Samuel had a mentor. His mentor was Eli. And you learn from your mentor's successes and um, mistakes, both, okay? It's not, they're not perfect people. Um, someone helps you to hear. So you have someone in your life that can give you guidance, can give you instruction, that can say, I don't know what to do about such and such. What should I do? Okay. Um, I had the privilege to have uh, my, the mentor that I have is the same mentor I've had since I was 23 years old. I'm proud to say I'm 38 years old and I'm so happy to be 38. It's amazing. It's been a great year um, for me. But um, she has been my mentor. She has helped me to interpret my life's experiences, marriage, children, um, ups and downs, what it is to be a woman, uh, it's the, the emotions that go along with all that, you know, all that drama. Um, 
you know, feelings of inadequacy, not sure what to do. You know, she helps, she helps me to do that. And so um, though she has a different role in my life right now, when I was younger, I would really lean on her. I remember calling her several times crying when I just thought I was just, I just wanted to like leave my husband. I'm just being completely transparent because it's just really hard sometimes to be married. And I didn't get it and I wanted things my way always because I felt like I really knew what was better. Like <laughs> doesn't he understand? I know better. Like <laughs> But I would cry, and I would, you know, and she would say, you got to fast. You got to pray fast. <laughs> you got to, like, what? You got to pray. You got to, you know, get in your words. See what God says about marriage. See what he says about, I, I mean, I was distraught. Like, why couldn't he just do it, you know? But she was like, no, you have to pray. You have to go before the Lord. You have to learn how to, to hear from God for yourself. And so I'm just like, just tell me the answer, you know? And she was, she sometimes she would give me really great guidance, but sometimes she would say, this one you're going to have to go figure out on your own. And so I'm so thankful that for that. So if you don't have someone like that in your life that you can really lean on and that you can really go to that is further along than you in their faith, you need to find that that kind of person. It's, it's, it, it's so important. And even though Samuel, even though Eli was, his relationship with the Lord was dimming. Um, Samuel still looked to him, still honored him, was still attentive to what he said. And so um, I'm happy that my mentor um, is a great woman of faith. She's beautiful. She's wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that she's a, a spiritual mom to me. Um, and she has a very fervent uh, relationship with God. But I've seen some things that I like and I don't like, and I've learned from those things too. So it's not all like roses and, and candy. It's like, you're just like, oh, maybe I should do that differently. And th that's why you have mentors. Um, and definitely God was even instructing Samuel um, to say, I want you, I'm telling you this about Eli so that you don't repeat this too. Right? Like I'm, I'm letting you in to be like, let this not be a habit. Um, and the other way that we can listen to God is to have a God encounter. I mean, Samuel had a one-on-one -on -one with God, and you learn to hear from yourself, le learn to hear God for yourself. And it's such a beautiful, it's so good to know that you really are hearing from God. It really is. And do you always hear correctly? Not always, but to know that, that he's desiring to speak, he's willing to speak, and that if you are able to be obedient to what he says, he'll speak to you again and again and again. He won't stop speaking. So what are the habits? All right. So this is the all about getting, getting you to a place where if you don't have a mentor, or even if you do, like I have a mentor, but I also have some habits that help me to hear God for myself. And again, I'm not an expert in like hearing from God, um, but I do feel like, God is stretching me. He is teaching me. Um, I get to learn from God himself in my everyday life. And so one of the habits is getting to know God because he can be known. Um, there's, there's a scripture, Psalm 85 is great, but there's another one in Isaiah 55 that says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Meaning that if you can know God, that means he can be known. And so... There are mysteries of God that we will never know. And the great mystery is, is already revealed to us. That is through Jesus Christ that he loves us. He's the great mystery of, of God. Uh, he loves us. He died on the cross for us. And he saved, our, saved us from our sin. Um, and we get to enjoy him forever because of Jesus Christ. But there are things that we can do um, to get to know him. And one of the key things is by reading scripture. Just like we did just a moment ago where we read that whole passage of scripture, you can do that at home and kind of like pick out what sticks out to you and knowing the context, that's what we did. We kind of said, okay, we know this story. I, we read the story. I can understand it in this context. I know what's applicable to then, and I can also extract to what's applicable to me now. Um, and it's, let me be honest, it's not easy to just like pick up the Bible and start reading. Most people don't do that. I, no one does that. No one just like picks up the Bible and just like, duh, 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 duh. okay. It's hard. 
It's not an easy thing to do. So to develop a habit or to develop a, a practice, um, one of the things that you can do is to get a Bible plan. That's a, there are so many Bible plans on, you know, you can just Google Bible plan and you can get a Bible plan. Um, one of the things I like to do is some of the um, books in the Bible that are intriguing to me. I'll just like start reading that book from start to finish. And I'll, make, I'll take like a month to read like one book. So like every week I might repeat that chapter over and over and over again until I like really get it. I did that with the Pauline letters, with Colossians, with Philippians, with Ephesians. I love all those things. And then I was just like, I really don't really know the minor prophets. Let me learn about this. And so I picked apart that as well. And so I'm not like some biblical expert, but it's just an exercise to get in the practice of reading the word. And the thing is that if you don't read it, you just won't know that God is speaking. You just won't. And so um, learn to be a lover of God's word. Um, his, his word does not go um, void, meaning it, it doesn't go unnoticed. In November, I had an opportunity to go to the Museum of the Bible. And that museum, if you can ever go in Washington, D.C., it's a beautiful museum. I mean, wherever you are in your faith, it is, the museum is gorgeous. And it's just, I mean, by the time I got done going through all the floors, I was just weeping. I was just like, God, your word is so real. And it is, it is penetrating through every generation. You can see God's word in history from the beginning of time. Like, it is very clear. Like, God's word is still going to stand even when we're gone. And so if you get an opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. and go to that museum, it's a new museum. It just opened, like, maybe 18 months ago. It's brand new. It's gorgeous. It's so pretty. And they have such a great cafe that has great tea. Like, this tea is so good. Um, it's so yummy. But it's a great, great museum. But the Bible, God's word, is real. And it's, it has impacted every area of culture, music, fashion. They were showing how the Bible was inspired fashion and the Bible is, I mean, you were just, you're just like, oh my gosh, like God is legit, like doing his thing. All right. Like he is not playing with you guys at all. Um, the other practice is um, solitude. And solitude is something that is really scarce in our culture because there's always something to fill up our minds and our eyes with stuff. We can always click on anything to get to anywhere we want to be, right? Just click, just click, 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 right? We're just clicking away. Um, my daughter, she'll go into her room, throw the covers over her head and watch YouTube with these families making slime. I, I'm sorry. It is so stupid. I, I am just so like, I'm just like, why are you watching them make slime? I can't, I can't. But anyways, I guess that's her place of solitude. But solitude is actually, um, the word actually means to be in silence. And so one of the ways that God speaks is he speaks in the quiet. And in the story, Samuel hears God somewhere in the middle of the night. We get the idea that it's somewhere in the middle of the night. So the, the lamp, the oil in the, of the lamp had not gone out yet. And the priests at that time, they were supposed to keep the, the oil in the lamps day and night. And so it lets you kind of know that it's in the night because then it says then and in, in the morning, Eli said, what did God say? So we know that maybe this is like 3 a.m. I'm just guessing. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say exactly. But try to create nighttime in your life. Okay, quietness. Um, how can you do that? Turn off your device for like 10 minutes. Just like turn it off, let it be. Um, one of the things I love to do is I love to actually like stretch in silence. So I'll just be like doing some stretching and just looking crazy <laughs> by myself, like doing all these strange stretching and just Maybe meditating on Psalm 85. You know, I will listen to the Lord. I will listen to his promises. Um, get in your car. Take the noise off. The radio, your Bluetooth. Just turn it off. Um, take a walk and don't do anything. Like, literally, don't pray. Don't listen to any. Just, like, just take a walk and just silence. Don't do anything. Just be there. Just be. 
Um, it's a great practice, and it and it it tuned your your ears, your spiritual ears to listen to God, your spiritual heart to listen to God. Habit three is pray. Um, Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. That's a great prayer is, though it wasn't echoed in that particular story that we're highlighting today, it goes without saying that prayer is just a conversation with God. It's talking and waiting for God to, to talk back. So some people like talk, 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 and they're like, I prayed. It was like, but did you listen? The listening part or the shema or the shema part of prayer is so important. You have to listen. Um, Jesus was a great example of prayer, talking to God, hearing back from him. Because at the end of the day, when we pray, we get God's perspective. Um, if you recall, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was praying to to say, God, I know I have to go to the cross, but if you can let this situation just be a different outcome, I'll be, I'll be good with that. And then, he's, then you know that God must have spoken to him because at the end of it, he says, but not my will, yours be done. And so there's this, like, this resolve that comes with prayer that I just don't go to God with my complaints. I go to God to hear his heart. I go to God to tell him what's on my heart, and he can tell me what's his, on his heart, and I get a bigger picture. I get the fuller picture. A.W. Tozer says, um, when I am praying the most eloquent, my most eloquent prayers, I'm getting the least accomplished in my prayer life. But when I stop getting eloquent and give God less theology and shut up and just gaze upward and wait for God to speak to my heart, he speaks with such power that I have to grab a pencil and notebook and take notes on what God is saying to my heart. And so sometimes it's not even about like, am I saying the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? It's like, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. It's like that could be your prayer. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Tozer also says, and A.W. Tozer is a, 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 just a famous theologian, um, if men and women are not willing to assume listening, a listening attitude, there will be no meeting with God in living personal experience. So there is no encounter with God without listening. And then lastly, the habit that we all have to have is obedience. Um, Luke 11 says, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. And so it's not enough just to hear the words, but we have to do it. Um, the posture is so clear. Um, Eli instructs Samuel on how to respond to the voice of the Lord. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. This isn't just he hearing, but it actually means to be ready to act, to respond and listen closely and obey. And you can see in that very short passage, it says that, and Samuel grew, the Lord was with him, and everything that he said came to pass. So it lets you know that Samuel just didn't hear once. He continued to listen. He continued to hear. God continued to show himself. God continued to use him. God continued to reveal to him what he was doing in Israel. In a time when God was not speaking, God can be speaking to you. I just want us to pause for a moment. I know I was like going a mile a minute and sometimes I can get like that when I get really just like into like, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. Cause I know I get really just like, and duh, duh. And she's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, slow down, Jenna. But I really, really, really believe in my heart that maybe the characters in this story you can identify with Maybe you're like, I'm not really that close to God, or I am kind of close to God, or I'm around, or maybe I've been creating a habit in my life that has not allowed me to hear, and I need to re-course correct and create a habit that could help me to hear. But regardless of, of where you may be, I believe that God wants to give us an encounter with him. And an encounter with God can change everything. And for this small boy that was just doing his normal duties, this, cha this encounter changes life. Imagine if we allowed God to speak to us and we heard what he was saying 
how that might truly impact our lives, impact the lives of our family, the lives of our children, maybe even the, even the life, maybe even shaping the nation. You don't know who you are. You don't know what God wants to say until you are in a place that you can hear. And when you're in a place that you can hear, everything can change. Everything can change. I'm going to ask Keziah and the the band to come up. And um, we're going to just take a moment to have some some silence and just allow some opportunity for God to speak. So we're going to take about like 30 seconds. It's going to feel like long when you're just like any, like 30 seconds feels long any time you're like with anyone. So we're going to just shema. Just listen. Lord, it's our desire to hear you. We want to know that when you speak, that we're equipped to hear. So God, do the things that you only can do. Forgive us for being distant. Forgive us for our sin. Forgive us for maybe forgetting who you actually are. Help us to remember all that you are. You are Father, you are Son, you are Holy Spirit, and we honor you today. Shape our love to love you. shape our thoughts to think like you. Lord, just think through our thoughts. And Lord, set our hearts on fire for you, God. Ignite us today to be a people that will hear you and that will listen when you call And while others may be doing other things and busy occupying their time with other kinds of activities, let us be focused and disciplined to be in prayer, to be in solitude, to be in your word, and to obey. We love you and we adore you. It's in your name. Jesus. Jesus.